Hey guys, welcome to the presentation. So today, uh, today's presentation probably will not be two hours. So we'll try to finish probably 9.30. And the topic is about business intelligence and data analytics bookend. Uh, for the longest time, I think um, all of us have realized the job market is getting competitive and especially last year and this year. And uh, part of the reason is the economy. Uh, Canadian economy and the economy in the US are not doing so well, even though you know the stock market, uh, the stock price has gone up so much. Uh, but if you look, look at other statistics, um, I think um, high employment, you know, lots of people are uh, were letting go and it's hard to land job. Even for experienced professionals, it's even harder uh, for the recent graduates from school. So we know the market, but I want you to know the, the other side of the story. We still have companies looking for talents and they're jobs posted on different job boards, including Indeed, including um, LinkedIn. And I can tell you um, from my conversation with the hiring, hiring partner, and organizations are also struggling to find the right people. Um, so you may, you may be wondering, you know, um, if both sides, um, the employers and the candidates are struggling. What did we miss? The problem is um, the employers are always complaining it's hard to find the right people. The right people with the right skill sets and the right experience. And the experience is always, always very tricky. Um, it's catch 2021, 20, right? So you you need the job to have the experience and you need the experience to have the job. How can we overcome that? We will talk about that uh, as well. So today I like to use a example. It's a story, it's a real case. It's a real person I have personal, personally helped with. Um, I, I, I want to use this story to show you the way. So even though as a recent graduate or maybe a career switcher with no experience in the data space, you can still find jobs if you find the right way. So this individual, um, she was a recent grad from school and she studied, um, she studied something related to um, to, to life science, not directly related to healthcare, uh, but remotely related. Um, so we um, worked together and she, she first took the book then. And then we um, discussed the positioning strategy. So we, uh, we said, we're going to uh, position you as someone who is looking for work in pharmaceutical company, in healthcare, in anything related to uh, life science, health, uh, even, even chemistry, you know. Uh, so we did that. And for the first couple of weeks, uh, she didn't get anything. And then we changed uh, the resume and we changed the project. As you will know, you know, uh, the bookend will give you the right skill set and also eight uh, use cases or eight projects that you can choose from. Uh, you don't have to put all eight on the resume, uh, but you should put probably five or six. So you can choose to elaborate on three projects and probably mention three more, right? So we pick and choose, and eventually we got an interview from a teaching university in London, not London, UK, but London, Ontario. Um, 
Some of you, if you study in Western University, you probably know uh, this is a teaching university uh, associated with uh, Western University. So she received um, this invitation for the technical round. Um, so she was required to work on a case and this was largely the case. We changed the, the wording a little bit just uh, to help you understand it. Um, I'm going to show you the data in a bit, but the background is this is a hospital and the hiring manager was the director of decision science. So he was hiring a analyst decision science reporting directly to him. So um, the student received this case and it includes a bunch of uh, CSV thoughts. I can show you the data first maybe. So a bunch of CSV, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so you can see um, some of the data is bigger than the other. Uh, date, location, microbiology, patient, surgery, transfer, visit. Um, not quite understand, you know, what's uh, what the data is without the context. So if we go back to this Word document, um, it says the data are CSV extracts from the hospital information system, HIS. And uh, each CSV file is named after its source table, meaning, you know, these are also the names of the source table inside that hospital information system. So coming back here, the data is not entirely clean and the owner of the data source is unavailable to address any data quality issue. Um, I think the hiring manager and did this on purpose. Uh, basically, he's saying he's not gonna ask answer any questions, and you will need to work uh, with the data uh, that's available. And if you see any data quality issue over here, it says please identify data quality issue and analyze their impact. And this is part of the test uh, to see if you can identify the data quality issue and how you're gonna uh, deal with it, how you're gonna treat the data quality you see. Okay, so um, this, starting from the point number two, you start to uh, read about the business. Okay, so a patient may have one or more visit to the hospital, which are date stamped. So the same patient may visit the hospital the first time, you know, uh, and then uh, got treated. Mm, you know, uh, we, we thought he is fine now and then uh, he got discharged. And then maybe after a week or so, um, something is wrong. So the patient uh, would visit the hospital the second time and sometimes even multiple times. So it is telling you, the patient may have one or more visit. So I like to draw your attention. Um, the data objects um, a lot of times reflect the business objects. So I started to highlight, you know, the data objects. Um, but I think uh, the name of the table also has meaning in the business world. So a patient is a patient, right? It's, it's a business object. A visit is a visit, you know, the patient visit the hospital. Um, so you start to see, oh, this is a table, this is a table, and this is a table too, right? So if you go back, you, you will see patient is a table, and visit is a table, and date is a table. Hmm, interesting. So a lot of times the data objects are actually a shortcut for you to understand the business. And um, paragraph number three, this will give you a lot of information, a lot of information. Even you 
never work in healthcare, never work in that environment of a hospital, you still understand it. Okay, so let's read it. Let's try. During each visit, the patient is first admitted, right? The patient is first admitted into the hospital. So the patient is first registered as an inpatient, right? So the patient is going to stay, you know, in the hospital when their condition requires 24 seven medical care. So something serious. And then the patient is transferred from location to location. So you started to see more data objects transfer. So each time we move the patient, it is a transfer. And, and the patient is moved from location A to location B. So location is another data project. So let's go back and you will see this transfer and you see location as well, right? Interesting. Okay, so where, uh, when the patient is moved from location to different locations, and, and you know, usually they receive uh, different kinds of uh, tests, and we call them microbiology tests. And if we know uh, the the root cause for you know uh, for for any symptom, and it may be decided that when the the, the surgeon will perform some. Um, procedure or operation on the patient. So uh, the patient could receive uh, different kinds of uh, uh, tests or even uh, surgical procedure. So test and procedure. And of course, after that, uh, the patient will receive the care from the nurses. So you see, you start to see the actors, different actors. So the patient will interact with microbiologists who you know does the test surgeon who perform the operation or procedure and the nurses um, will provide the care needed for the for the for the for the patient right until the patient's condition improves enough and then they're finally discharged from the hospital so i think if you're with me you will realize ah i started to understand more and more how hospital works how uh, through the lens of a patient, you know. So if you pretend you are the patient, you know, if you go through this patient journey, you would somewhat understand how the patient, uh, how the patient, how the hospital works, right? I hope you are with me so far. By the way, if you have any questions, please feel free to use uh, chat to raise the question. So I'm going to use this story to show you our approach uh, because I personally helped this student. I didn't help her do the task, um, but I helped her to prepare you know, for uh, the resume and I helped her to get the interview opportunity. I also give her some pointers so she could finish uh, the task and she did finish the task. So she got the second round um interview with the higher manager so every step of the way i as a mentor and helped this student until uh, she was hired so she did work um in london you know for i think a year and a half um you know before she found uh, a better opportunity in toronto uh, so that's where she uh want to move uh, so she could stay with her husband all right and there is another point over here. So when a microbiology has this um, organism, and if you recall COVID, uh, you probably understand if the test result is positive, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's not very good, right? Uh, so that means the whatever organism um, you're trying to test, uh, is, it is there, right? So then it's positive. Otherwise, the test results is negative or the sample is clear. And then this is a good, good thing and this is a bad thing. So you just need to understand that, all right? So now, so here is the background and here's the task. So this is what the student is supposed to do. First, identify the data quality issues and analyze their impact. 
And second, create SQL queries and export to, to the run result. Um, so there are four tasks. The first is surgical site infection. In short, it's SSI. And um, it's open book. So you could um, Google uh, all these terms to get a better idea. Now with ChatGPT, it's even, mm, even more convenient, right? So this is a positive wound culture after surgery. And um, the administration or the management of the hospital are interested in a report on infection count by an uh, organism present. So um, I think you start to see, you know, how we um, how we how we present, you know, the report uh, using either SQL uh, or other tools like Power BI or even Excel, right? So um, at the beginning of um, uh, this meetup, uh, you watch the the other the other uh, uh, project or use case. Um, you probably remember we color code um, dimension blue and um, measure green. So in this case, this is actually uh, a measure. So you can color code it uh, green if you want, right? So you can color code this green and uh, you can color code this uh, blue if you want. Yeah, something like that. Um, so infection rate by procedure and surgeon. Uh, okay, so this will um, help the doctor to to measure you know, how many uh, out of all patients actually got infected. You know, right after a surgery. How did you know? You you use the microbiology test, right? If the organism is present and then it's infected. Right. Okay. So the, uh, the that's the first report. The second report is a thirty day readmission rate. So here is the definition: the registration date time of the next visit, if it is within thirty days of discharge date time of the current visit. So that means the patient got discharged at this date time. Um. So he went home. If Within 30 days of discharge, um, you know, something is wrong with the patient. And he got admitted to or registered um, again. So uh, the next visit registration date time, if it is within 30 days of uh, the current visit discharge date time, then it is defined as a 30 day readmission. So um, this, you know, has asked you to identify the visit with this 30 day readmission and you calculate the rate, you know, out of the total visit. And also the average length of the stay, you know, how long on average the uh, patients stay in the hospital. So you realize this is, uh, this is what, um, Visit with a 30 day readmission. So this is a measure. And this is a dimension. And this is also a dimension, right? right. So this infection is a measure. And this is a dimension. So this really helps it. Eh? So if you identify the measure and dimension, uh, it really helps you. So the length of stay is also a measure, right? Uh, so the third question, microbiology utilization. So um, if you look at this as the like quality of the treatment, this is also quality of the treatment. This is probably efficiency of the process, right? So it measures turnaround time, uh, how fast, and and also the productivity, the kind of test you know um, microbiologists can perform. So turnaround time and the kind of tests are two measures of the lab performance, right? So 
uh, some more uh, statistics. You could measure the 90 percentile and average and stand, uh, standard deviation of turnaround time and uh, the test, test count uh, by month. So this is what, this is a dimension. This is a dimension and this is a dimension. And so TAT is a measure, right? So TAT is a measure. And what kind of test? This is a measure too. Okay, so it's it's a lot of information and you need to break down the, the question. So if you form a habit of doing this, this is like business analysis before you get busy, you know, with uh, data and, and coding, right? So the last one is also about utilization of uh, the hospital facility, you know, the patients versus maybe beds, how many beds, right, we have in the hospital. If the utilization is 99%, oh my God, so, so it's almost uh, in full capacity. Maybe we need more uh, beds, we need more buildings. And if the utilization is only 30%, hmm, then it's underutilized, right? So somehow the facility um, is empty. So we, we, we need to find a way to, to either, either, you know, make better use of uh, the hospital facility or something else is wrong. Okay, so this is basically the kind of patients in a unit at midnight, you know, before um, today and tomorrow, right? And then you can present the data in your cross tab. You need to know what a cross tab is with dates as columns and units as well. So it's very detailed specification. So what are these? Uh, this is obviously dimension. So th this is also dimension. Um, so what is the measure? Measure is the patients, number of patients, right? And the units can can be rolled up, to, can be aggregated to building and facility level. And you will see this in a moment. And so this is also uh, just different levels of the same dimension. Okay, are you with me so far? So you're, if you're with me, the deliverable is you need to, you need to give a data quality report <laughs> and then you need to um, export the CSV report with the table name. And you, you need to also show the SQL queries uh, you use to create the report. Okay, so this is business analysis, you know what to do. Uh, so fast forward, I'm just going to show you uh, what the student did, you know, how she actually got, uh, how, how she passed the technical round and uh, went to the second round and uh, finally received the offer. Okay, so she used um, MySQL. And altogether, it's, um, it's like two, 2,000, uh, three, uh, not 2,000, sorry, three, 300 lines of code. Um, so you will have to follow this almost religiously. And this is how we train the students. So you need to um, create a database. So if I drop this database, uh, and then uh, it's gone. So, uh, UH is University Hospital, in short. So you, you will need to create the database and then we use the database. So you can run this, right? So this is good. And then you create how many tables? You need to create one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tables and go back. You need to work, um, work on this uh, steps over and over, so you form a habit of doing it, right? So um, if you if you do enough analysis of the data, you will do something like this. So you have the seven tables over here, and then you have the columns of uh, each table. And you should also uh, look at the values of each column uh, so you can 
So you can um, you can determine the data type. So this is actually a data type. Right. So some of it is bar chart um, up to five. And some just, you know, this, these are all variable lengths of uh, characters. This is the date time. And this is fixed length, six. And you have date time. So, and uh, for instance, gender, you know, it has three values, uh, male, female, and intersex. And over here, deceased. <laughs> So some patient actually died um, during their stay. So this is the enumer enumerate, um, only two values, two possible values, two or four. So these are the basic training you will receive. And you should always you know, look at the summary statistics of the table, the number of distinct values and number of unique values. I highlight the um, primary key so whenever you see a primary key, the number of distinct values uh, is the same as the number of unique values. This should always be the same, right? Uh, always the same. So this table, the same, the same, the same, right? The same. Uh, but for the foreign key, um, you see the number of distinct values is greater than the number of unique values. See that, right? Okay, over here, right? Okay, so you see, I also highlight the foreign key over here. So once you have done your data analysis, you can go back and write the proper code to create this table, right? So for instance, you have four columns over here and you um, define patient ID as the primary key, okay? So you can create this table. So over here, you see this is uh, the primary key visit ID, um, but you also see pa patient ID in this table, it's as a foreign key. So patient ID is a foreign key and foreign key is always in uh, reference to the primary key, okay? So this is a foreign key in visit table, in references to patient ID in the patient table. Okay, so let's run this. Let's keep going. Uh, let's run this. All together, seven table. So day table is very simple, <laughs> only one column. So after that, if I refresh, I should see seven table. Very nice, uh, but they're empty. So if I open visit, nothing. There's nothing here. Okay. So the next step is what? Oh, before I go to the next step, I actually want to show you the data model so because we put the constraint, the primary and foreign key, and automatically, uh, my SQL workbench will. Um, be able to understand the relationship, you know, between the tables uh, through primary and foreign key. So if I click database, if I click reverse engineer, uh, next, next. If I click this database, Universal Hospital, next, secure. Okay, so you can actually see the relationship. <laughs> so this is the foundation, you know, of a data analyst, of a business intelligence analyst. You will need to know uh, database design, you know, the data structure, you know, how we organize data into related tables in a database. You know, we uh, use primary and foreign key to uh, create a relationship you know, between the tables. So usually, usually you have uh, something called a fact table in the middle, and then you have a number of dimension tables around fact tables, okay? So over here, uh, you can look at 
visit has affected me. So location is the dimension, that's where, right? Patient is the dimension, that's who, right? Date is the dimension, that's when, right? And what else? And surgery and microbiology, these are also factors. These are also factors. So I'm going to close this. So after that, you will uh, load the data. And we code SQL, so everything is automatic. Um, but before you load data, you will need to, um, let's look at, let's show global variable. It says R. So we need to turn this on to be able to read data from uh, local drive. So let's run this. Okay, and let's show global variable again. Now it's turned on. So now you can load data. I'm going to clear this so you will see if this data load is successful. So if I run this, it says 28,000 rows are affected. So this is successful. And if I refresh, um, which which table is patient? So if you click patient again, now you see all the data, right? Yeah, lots and lots of data. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to run this. So this is also, you know, it's running, it's successful. And run this. So it's basically reading data from local drive and populate uh, this table. All right. That takes, takes some time. Some tables are very small. This is relatively bigger. And the last one is here. All right. So now if I refresh again, all these tables are populated with data. So next, you could, you could, um, this is just an example to show you uh, how you can find the data issues. Uh, one of the data issues is, uh, so for instance, registration should happen before discharge. Um, if registration date time is actually after discharge date time, then that's not right. So you better run this. If I see anything over here, and then that's not normal. Uh, but the count is zero, so then it's normal, right? For microbiology, you collect the sample, and then you do the test, and then you uh, you you give back the result. So this should happen before the uh, death. So collect should happen before result. But if collect is actually greater than result, and that's that's just wrong. That's that's not normal. So if I run this, you will actually see um, 1,361 records have problems. So this is one of the data you see. So for surgery, it's the same thing. And this is surgery start date time and surgery end date time. Usually it's on the same day, but different time stamp, right? And if I run this, so zero, which is good, right? So this is transfer, transfer. So um, every time uh, the patient got transferred, uh, you will have a current date time. So this is a uh, date time stamp. So once again, this one visit um, should start with registration time and should end with discharge time. And all the current date time should happen between registration and discharge. Um, otherwise, it's it's um, uh, it's a data issue. So if I do this, so zero, that's good. Okay. So now I'm going to show you the first question: infection count by organism. Remember, so if the microbiology test is the wound counter, how did you know this? And um, you will need to do some digging. So these are the dimensions, and they're some of the most important dimensions. You will need to list all the values over here. So for instance, the facility, there are two buildings. 
the North and South Hospital. Uh, oh, uh, wait a minute. So these are actually like two areas of the hospital, North and South. And then um, the next level, four building, Alpha, Beta, Charity, and Main building. And then you have different units, right? So these are just three levels of the location. Disease, four, or two. So microbiology tests, uh, how many, uh, six kinds of tests, including the wound capture over here. So obviously this data is much simplified, but still you have enough information to, for you to actually experience uh, the operation of the hospital. So these are the different results. And uh, there's one particular result, it says sample clear. And so this is actually good. And everything else is positive, right? is bad. So uh, we have three microbiologists. In reality, you probably have more than three. You also have three surgeons, uh, four surgeons. Uh, in reality, you probably have more, right? And these are the different procedures, you know, the surgeons uh, are capable of performing on the patients. So you, you will need to really get the distinct uh, values to really understand this dimension. So if you have this, I mean, you will be able to code, right? So over here, I want to see the infection count by the result by organism. So this will be your report. So this is the first, and then you can do test count, infection count, and infection count divided by test count is the infection rate by procedure and surgeon. Over here, uh, at the beginning of uh, this beta, I actually show you guys, some of you, uh, the more advanced uh, uh, query, SQL query, including window function. Um, so this is nothing complex. It's just, you need to understand the relationship, you know, between three tables and then, um, you know, some of the validation rules you can put over here to make sure, you know, you consider the data you see. So let's uh, just run it and see the result. You see, by primary procedure and the primary surgeon, and this is number of tests, number of uh, uh, tests with the infection, and this is the infection rate. So 10%, right? Um, in reality, is this too high, too low? But you can use it to establish maybe a benchmark to measure the quality of the, 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 the procedure, okay? So if I go to the next question, next question, I think we started to use uh, window function. You see, this is the window function. Okay, and if you remember, the readmission, you you will have to put the registration date time of the next visit, you know, in the in the current row, right? Right beside the uh, the current row. So uh, you can only achieve that purpose using window function. Uh, so over here you see. Uh, the query within query. Uh, this is a query within query. And uh, this is another one, query within query. And this is another one. So um, it may look intimidating, but if you took the same approach that I show you at the beginning of the meetup, you just need to break down this uh, question. And then um, every step you 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 code it and test it and before you move to the next step. And then nothing is too too complex and too difficult. So if I just run the whole thing, you will see the result. So it actually takes some time. If if it takes too long, then you will have to think about the performance, you know, how to uh, optimize the query so it can run faster. So this is discharge surgeon and discharge unit. So discharge surgeon 
it takes actually one query to find because discharge surgeon is the last surgeon you know, uh, during the stay. Discharge unit is the last unit, the patient stay. You know. And then average days of stay and readmission rate. So is 10%, 11%, 12% too high, too low? I don't know. But you can look at the historical you know, number and you can recommend to the director uh, maybe uh, we'll have to put a threshold if it's over there, and then maybe uh, it's something we'll have to uh, investigate and then uh, put an implement, uh, implementation plan to improve that. Okay, so the oh, there's one more average standard deviation of turnaround time and counts by mouse tests and microbiology. Once again, this is a relatively long period of a short period. So you better run this, you see year month, microbiology test, microbiologist. So this is uh, the measurement of the uh, microbiology lab. Average uh, turnaround time uh, in hours, standard deviation and test count. See? And so the last one is number of patients at midnight by facility viewing unit by date, okay? Um, this is a relatively, more complex query. And this actually takes a while to see. All right. So I just use this example to show you, this is something you will have to do <laughs> to pass the technical round. And if you really understand the the business part of it, and if you have good, so this is the result. If you have good, you know, skills and through the training, and you can definitely do it. Uh, but end of it, you know, we actually use. Uh, we think this is a great case. We can use it. Uh, so we we change a little bit, and we can use this to train our students and to to find jobs in healthcare in hospital. Um, so eventually, uh, it becomes some, something, you know, like, you know, Universal Hospital, you're the decision support analyst, and these are the technical part. Um, CSV, you will need to work with CSV health. So, um, the database um, could be MySQL, could be SQL Server, and you're using Power BI, or maybe SQL to handle it. Um, so if you look at the four bullet points, now you completely understand um, after, you know, I walk you through the, the, the case. So the first is leveraged hospital information system data to analyze patient journey from admission to discharge and measure the quality of care and the operational efficiency. So this is about effectiveness. This is about efficiency, right? This is about do the right thing. And this is about do it fast, right? And then second bullet is ingested and cleaned millions of records, uh, which is true from seven source table, identifying and resolve data issues, enhance data quality for accurate analysis of patient care. So you start to use very, you know, standard uh, industry terms and people realize, oh, you really get it. Then develop a re robust data model encompassing who, what, where, when, how, and why dimensions of the patient journey, enabling healthcare data exploration and healthcare process analysis. And finally, define and calculate KPIs, for instance, infection rate, length of stay, readmission rate, turnaround time, occupancy rate, to track and optimize healthcare process. So after this, you will feel very comfortable, you know, putting all this on a resume and once again, maybe look for an opportunity in a healthcare uh, industry. Okay, so this become one of the small uh, project in use cases uh, you can work on. So if you look at this, we have so many. <laughs> so this is the uh, real estate. And after you finish this, uh, you will be able to add you know, this experience on your resume and you will feel very comfortable presenting that because 
you actually did the project, you can actually showcase the project, you can actually um, include the link um, to your portfolio. Um, people can look at the project in detail. And I, I'm telling you, this is just so much better than your resume to help convince the hiring manager and that you have what it takes to be successful. And they will give you that opportunity um, uh, to, to meet you for an interview. And eventually if you do well, they will give you uh, that job. So this is what the supply chain, and this is financial planning and analysis. So every single one uh, is a, a valuable experience. So those of you who uh, really feel short of the experience, you know, you feel that you don't have the experience or skill, and we train you to work on skills in the right context. So the context is actually the experience and the, the skills. After you finish the project, and you will develop the skill, right? And you will never forget the skill because you remember the skill by the context. So this is in the energy sector. This is telecom, and this is CRM email campaign. This is e-commerce. This is digital marketing, and this is a retail. This is fintech, and this is hospital, and this is manufacture. Okay. So how did you feel? Oh, I still have <laughs> 10 people with me. I, I know if I go through that, uh, I probably will lose some of you. <clears throat> but I think it's important to let you see um, what, what is coming, you know, what do you expect, you know, after you finish the bookend and, and, and when you, after you start looking forward. Um, the data rows are somehow technical, so you will for sure have a technical round. And these are the skills you need to develop. And these are the experience and you can accumulate by working on project and use cases throughout the bookend. Any questions so far? No question? Okay. All right, so coming up next, I'm just gonna show you the skills. So these are the experience. I want to show you the skills. So uh, once again, these are just samples. You don't have to write exactly the same. Uh, but in fact, this is probably too much. Um, but you can write probably five or six bullets to look technical and um, to, to get employers, hiring managers interested in seeing you. Um, so for instance, you can include Excel. Excel is still important. At the beginning of the Meetup event, if you recall, we actually went through something like Power Query. And not many people know how to use Power Query within Excel. And not many people know that you can actually create data model using Power Pivot. And not many people know how to build a pivot table, not just on one table, but on a data model. Not many people know how to use slicers, you know, to filter and, and, then, and then solve the business problem. Okay, so then statistics, machine learning, programming is important. So in this book, we teach you SQL and Python. And not just basic SQL or foundational SQL, we teach you advanced topics like complex joins, nested query, window function. And through that example, you can tell um, SQL can be challenging, but this is probably the most important skill you will have to develop. And some people say, oh, you can just use Power BI. Um, if you really want to do well in Power BI visualization, you need very strong SQL. You know, just through SQL, it's not just programming. Through SQL, it's also database, you know, how we create a data model, how we organize data into related table. Okay, so you see SQL as both as a programming language and also as a database system. And in this book, we actually give you the opportunity to work with multiple different data 
database systems, including MySQL, SQL Server, PostgreSQL, and BigQuery, AWS Redshift, and the most important thing is dimensional data model. All right? And data governance, you know, how to detect and solve data quality issues, including missing value, duplicates, outliers, anomalies, formatting error. And these are basic, basic skills. Okay, so a good ex example of the resume, I can show you a sample resume. Just give me a sample. Okay, so this could be a, all right. Um, this is a one page resume uh, of Zoe Tran. Zoe, she has been doing really, really well. You probably wouldn't believe it. Zoe was in Canada only last year. So she landed at the beginning, I actually uh, December, 2022. So um, within six months of landing, she did the book camp and I'm, I was also her mentor. I helped her, you know, build this resume. And with this resume, she had a number of interviews and then she landed a job as a manager. So her first job in Canada was actually a manager position. So she came from Vietnam uh, from a uh, social study background, you know, it's a, uh, uh, in one of the universities in Vietnam. Um, but somehow we develop these skills. I think some of these uh, look familiar to you. Um, and then work experience and project experience over here. And more importantly, you know, the portfolio sample, um, you don't have to spend too much time on the second page, but at a glance, you would realize Wow, this is a really good work, right? Um, so that piqued the interest of the hiring manager and um, they want to meet her. And if she did well, you know, during the interview, um, she simply had the job in the back. Um, so my recent conversation with Zoe, she moved again, you know, within two years, she uh, moved from uh, one job to another even better opportunity. Uh, so she, she's been doing really, really well. Okay. Any question on the resume? You're being really quiet. No question? <laughs> okay. So the self-paced um, bookend versus light bookend, but what's the difference? The curriculum is almost identical. The only difference is um, the light bookend. Uh, we actually have instructors teaching the students live versus uh, recorded self-paced bookend. And you just sit back and watch the video. And um, it's pretty easy. I can open any of this. Let me see. Soft paste. You have different modules of soft paste. And, but eventually you will be put on the book camp. So those different modules are pre camps. And we, uh, train you on data fundamentals. So the learning curve of the actual bookend wouldn't be too steep for you, okay? So uh, you will see it's modulized. All together we have 16 modules. And any, any of these, if you open it, and uh, you will see uh, the material you can download and day one, day two. You know, some of these are videos, You have the password and you start building, you know, with the instructor. So it's actually 
quite easy for the, for you to follow if you have the video and you also have if there are no more questions let's move on to the second day okay and you can you can and some of uh, the students are visual learners and they they want to watch the video and just follow the instructor and finish the project uh, some other students um, they prefer both uh, video and text-based so we also provide text-based so I can I can show you some of the so for instance a plus and you will have something similar like this so you can you can follow step by step all right and if you get stuck in the middle uh, we will be able to help you you know we'll unblock you so you can move on and that's the most important thing and um, so in fact the self-paced bookend um you have more hours with the teaching assistants and mentors and we want to make sure you know the learning experience is good and you will learn the right skill sets and also accumulate the right experience um before you look forward right um what else so we provide career services after the bookend so if i click mentors you know this is our uh career mentorship so you can select any of the mentors based on the profile so it includes a simple bio and the linking and we build the profile for every mentor by the role they have worked industry they have worked in and the skills and use cases they're familiar with and if you have your target roles in the target industry and if you find you know, Johansep is the expert in that space, then naturally you want to um, have Johansep as your mentor. So at WeCloud Data, we actually pay the mentors to help the new generation of the students. And all the mentors are experts in their specific domain. And they are not just here to make extra bucks they actually share the same passion to help the uh, uh, next generation of data analysts or data scientists or data engineers to man the right job and build a career. Okay. And um, you, you can also tell by the services they offer. And we also have a quick career app to make your job search easy. Uh, one of the examples is the job tracker. So you can download the Chrome extension. If you see any interesting posting on LinkedIn or Indeed, you will download it and it will become a Google extension over here. So you can just click and that job, including all the text and all the details, will be parsed and archived into this job tracker. So this is really, really helpful. It helps you get organized. It also helps the mentor to track your progress. Okay. So if you don't hear back from this job, you can move it to, to archive. Otherwise, you can move it from apply to interview in. And if there's somebody you want to connect and the mentor may be able to help you or someone else, within we cloud data trusted network can help you um, maybe refer you to the hiring team and hiring manager and um, we can just add a contact over here and a mentor can uh, type on it to help you prepare for this opportunity so every job is just like a drawer you can open and then you and a mentor can work on it okay um so far, you've been very, very quiet. 
Um, I don't know if you have any question, any question at all for me? If not, maybe I will just spend a couple minutes to show you the difference between different data roles. I have this um, very useful uh, picture. So you see, we use 11 skills to profile different data roles, data analyst, data scientist, data engineer, and machine learning engineer. Um, you see, it's the same 11 uh, skills, but with different focus. As a data analyst, you will focus a lot on reporting, data visualization, storytelling, and business insight. As a data scientist, um, your strength is mass, your statistics are mass, and you will spend a lot of time um, during the bookend and learning how to develop and build machine learning model. And A-B testing is really important for you. You will learn a bit reporting, but not as you know much as a data analyst or BI. Um, as a data engineer, your focus is uh, infrastructure, data infrastructure, building data pipelines. So database management is really, really important. Data pipeline is important. Cloud computing is important because nowadays, almost all data, data pipelines are built on cloud, okay? I'm a machine learning engineer, and some people got confused, um, data scientists, machine learning engineer. So this is model development, and this is model deployment and operation. Right. So this is ops, machine learning operations, deployment and operation. Um, you know, as a machine learning engineer, you should also learn a little bit of uh, machine learning modeling, but not as extensive as a data scientist. Okay. So I, I hope this makes sense to you. Um, if you want to build depths and become more specialized, and if you have a strong uh, statistic background, maybe data scientist is for you. And if you come from a strong coding background, uh, maybe data engineering is more for you. And if you come from a business background, um, or, you know, um, any accounting or finance, and any other, um, you know, educational background, and you may consider data analysts or business intelligence. And it's different strategy. You're building depths, building depths, building depths over here. And here you're developing a professional range. And working as a data analyst, um, you can you can make good money too, right? If you build, uh, if you go wide, right? The most important thing for you is to combine three things. And that becomes your uh, advantage. You combine business data and communication, okay? Um, I think that will be all if you don't have any questions. Um, let me just copy paste my contact details in case you want to connect with me afterwards. And so you can copy paste down. Um, so you can send me email. You can click my calendar link and schedule a session with me to discuss, you know, your particular circumstances and how to strategize your next move. You know? Or you can connect with me on LinkedIn and we can do direct message very easy. You don't have to send emails. All right. So if no more questions, that will be all. And Adam, I think that's everything. So I'm going to stop sharing. And good night, everyone.